diseases of sweat and sebaceous glands. This is the intended learning outcomes that you should know by the end of this lecture. You should know that there is conditions that occurs secondary to exposure to heat and over humidity like the malaria and which uh, has different clinical forms. Uh, you should know that there is uh, uh, specific preventive and management guidelines that you follow to treat such cases. The second part of the lecture involves the sebaceous gland uh, diseases, which is the acne vulgaris. Uh, you should fulfill the etiology, pathogenesis, and natural course, in addition to the different clinical presentations and the specific skin lesions of acne vulgaris, all of which is followed by discussing the topical and or the systemic treatments needed for such uh, stages of acne. Diseases of sweat glands, sweat rash or the malaria. It occurs in warm climates while warming in, in an incubator during an attack of fever or, or from wearing occlusive dressings or warm clothing. The crying sweat duct occlusion is the initial event. The duct ruptures, leaks sweat into the surrounding tissues and induces an inflammatory response according to the level of the occlusion of the duct According to the it occurs uh, it, it, the duct rupt, uh, according to the uh, the level we have the distinct forms of malaria. Uh, malaria crystallina it is an occlusion of the eccrine duct at the skin surface, resulting in accumulation of sweat under the stratum corneum. A clear drop or vesicles with little or no erythema forms. The malaria rubra, there is occlusion of the uh, intraepidermal part of the eccrine sweat duct. Papules and vesicles are surrounded by red halo or diffuse erythema. The malaria profunda, it is an occlusion of the eccrine sweat duct at the dermoepidermal junction, and the malaria posterosa if secondary infection occurs. Treatment of such conditions includes cold water compresses and the proper ventilation, the condition altogether is self-limited. Diseases of sebaceous glands, acne vulgaris. Acne vulgaris is a chronic inflammatory disease of sebaceous hair follicles. It occurs due to, or acne results from, increased sebum production, pilosebaceous duct cornification or hyperkeratinization, colonization of the duct by propionobacterium acne, and the release of inflammatory mediators. Acne, the androgen-sensitive sebaceous hair follicle, show hyper-responsiveness that result in increased sebum excretion. Sebum is deficient in linoleic acid, which is a fatty acid important for the normal cornification of cells of the pilosebaceous follicle. Accordingly, hyperkeratosis of the pilosebaceous duct occurs with obstruction of the pathway of sebum. This results in the occurrence of the primary lesion of acne, which is the comedon or the comedones. They are either open, which are the black heads, or closed, which are the white heads. Propionobacterium acnes are responsible for the, the are bacteria that are responsible for the inflammatory process of acne vulgaris. The papules, the nodules, and the pustules. They are anaerobic organisms that increase abruptly or at puberty. They secrete many clinical, many chemical mediators, the most important of which is lipase. Lipase is responsive, responsible for the degradation of sebum triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. Free fatty acids are irritant, adding more to the problem of hyperkeratosis during their pathway along the hair shaft. Hemoattractants for the inflammatory cells are, are, are another factor in the pathogenesis. What about the clinical picture of acne vulgaris? We all 
see acne at the age of the teen age, which, is, which starts at puberty. It affects both sexes equally and affects the most the sites of predilections uh, are the face, the upper part of the chest, and the upper part of the back, and sometimes the shoulders. Lesions are pleomorphic, including comedones, papules, pustules, nodules, and cysts. Residual post-acne scars may eventually occur. This slide shows the white or the closed comedon. These are white papules that lack inflammation beneath the surface of the skin. This is the pustule, which inflammatory papules and pustules, and there is also closed comedones. Treatment of acne vulgaris include topical treatments, which includes the peeling agents, the topical antibiotics, benzoyl peroxide, and azelaic acid. Systemic treatments include systemic antibiotics, antiandrogen, systemic retinoids, and intraregional steroids for nodulocystic acne. Treatment of post-acne scars include chemical peeling, dermabrasion, laser resurfacing. These are the systemic anti treatments of acne. Antibiotics include tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline, but they should not be used in children or in pregnant women. Bacterial resistance occurs when, give, when antibiotics given in the therapeutic dose acting at the, uh, as a bacteriostatic, but in the sub-therapeutic dose they exert an anti-lipase action. Antiandrogens like ciprotyrone acetate. Okay. Also, from the systemic treatments, the systemic retinoids or isoretinoin that is used in severe nodulocystic acne or non or not responding to the usual treatment in a dose of 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per day. But uh, side, serious side effects should be warned, like cracked lips, dry skin, nose bleeding, hair loss, and muscle aches. Transient increase in serum triglycerides and liver enzymes, and it should not be given in during pregnancy as is seriously teratogenic.